about a month ago talking about why I think it's important that you really understand all the aspects of owning a horse with the responsibilities of training, hoof care, health care, saddle fitting, all of the above. Why I think it's important to have a well-rounded knowledge of all of those aspects and why I think you should as a horse owner know how to do all of those things to an extent. And in that video somebody had asked me to go in more depth of how I do those things with my horse. So. Since I have to trim Stella's feet today, I thought I would take you along for the ride. So this is not gonna be like a tutorial on how to trim your horse's feet. I'm not a full-time farrier. I don't do this uh, for fun. <laughs> I'm merely just going to show you how I do it, just for an example, but I highly recommend if you are going to get into trimming your horse's hooves that you do a bunch of research from a bunch of different farriers, some people for different opinions, watch a bunch of different videos, and just get a well-rounded knowledge of how every other person does it. And if you have somebody who is knowledgeable in person to check over your work, make sure that you're all good. And if you don't have that kind of person, there are like Facebook groups that have lots of knowledgeable farriers on there that give you great advice, but you have to have thick skin to be able to deal with that crowd. Now, I only know Stella's feet. I only know how to do her feet. I am not a professional, I'm not, I don't do this for a living. So I'm not going to be giving much advice on how to trim a horse's hoof. I'm just gonna be talking about how I do it, how I keep her feet healthy, how I trim her feet, and the things I look for to make sure that everything is going smoothly and her feet are growing just the way they should be. Now one of the first things I like to keep an eye on, even when her feet are grown out and needing to be trimmed, uh, is that the good conformation, because a bad hoof trim definitely messes with their conformation. Something like their heel being too short can make them, their legs kind of come in, like their back legs would be standing like this, like they're leaning forward, and then their back legs would be kind of coming in, and they would look uncomfortable. Now if the heels were too long, their back legs would kind of go out more, like behind them. What we're really looking for is a perfect conformation where their legs are nice and straight underneath them, their back legs are nice and straight, we want them to be aligned, their back leg aligned with their hip, just to make sure that we're on the right track already. So now that we can see that that is looking good, like it should be, uh, we just need to follow the guidelines that the hoof gives us. We know that we can move on without uh, drastically having to change anything. Before I get into trimming, I also want to talk about the signs of a healthy hoof and an unhealthy hoof. Signs of an unhealthy hoof is a horse that is sensitive on their feet, have obvious pain in their feet, causing them to look lame. Soft feet and bad cracking. Like if you go too long without trimming your horse's hoof, then you will get small cracks on the bottoms of the feet. But if the crack goes high and to the hairline, that is a bad problem. When a horse has pain in their feet, they're obviously going to contort themselves into trying to make themselves more comfortable in which they're causing more pain through their whole body because they're holding a certain amount of tension in themselves to try to make themselves comfortable. Most of the times when people have horses with unhealthy feet, they put a band-aid over the problem with shoes, metal shoes, let's clarify. They say that the horse has uh, sensitive feet, they put shoes on them. They say that the horse has soft feet, they put shoes on them. There's a million reasons why people will say that their horse needs shoes when really it comes down to mineral deficiency. I tend to sway on the side of thinking that most horses do not need shoes and that people use shoes a little too frequently without figuring out uh, the actual solution that the horse needs. Shoes can actually be very harmful for your horse. A metal shoe will prevent your horse's natural suspension in their legs. So when they run or just walk or whatever, they have much more uh, stress on their joints and their tendons and their muscles. Again, the horse is going to be holding a lot more tension in their body and they're way more likely to pull a muscle or tendons or whatever. Shoes do not fix 
the problem. If your horse has unhealthy feet, soft feet, sensitive feet, other types of issues, it is a mineral deficiency, it is a lifestyle deficiency. Uh, if your horse is a stable horse, then they might not be getting the proper exercise. It's extremely harmful on the horse's body to have to stand in a cement stable. Even if you have rubber mats, it's still very hard on their joints and whatever. That can be a cause to bad feet. If your horse has extremely dry conditions, they that might cause cracking and other issues. If your horse has extremely wet conditions, again, they might cause more like rotting and soft feet and sensitive feet. To be able to balance these kind of conditions in their living style, if you live in a really dry area, some people actually will make a wet spot in the horse's pasture so that they can soak their feet once in a while. And obviously, if you live in a wet area, try to find space for them to have drier spots and take them on rides. And it's actually great for your horse to walk on stone, rock. And if your horse sustains an injury or has a chronic issue like a crack or some sort of bruising, I actually really recommend scoop boots. I don't personally have any experience with them, but people that I admire have said that they work great and they love them. It helps take off all the pressure on that hoof and the horse is able to uh, distribute its weight properly through its body and they're not holding any tension and that area is able to heal properly. There are other types of shoes too that could work. I know scoop boots are kind of expensive, but you know, horses are expensive and it's expensive to have vet bills. So whatever kind of precaution you can take to help them out, give them a little bit of relief, I think is a great decision. So the way we keep our horses feet nice and healthy all year round is we give them a mineral mix. Now we don't buy anything like pre-made. We like to make sure that we have all full control of what goes into our horses bodies and the amounts of everything is really convenient to be able to do it all yourself and you actually save money in the long run. So buying all of the minerals separately figuring out how much your horse needs what, and suddenly you have full control of what your horse is getting and you can give them more of something if they need it. Some of the minerals we like to use is calcium, kelp, excuse me, magnesium, sometimes baking soda, DE. We use two different types of salts. We use a Redmond salt and a mineral salt, which is like a salt mixed in with clay minerals. We mix this all together in like a five gallon bucket and then I give it to the horses like once or twice a week, depending on what their situation is. If it's like a muddy season or if it's like they're just going on pasture for the first time of the year, I will make sure that they have full access to it all the time so that they can have healthy guts and good strong feet. Stella always has really good strong healthy feet. Never had an issue with her feet. It seems to work for us, so I suggest doing that. We also do things like low sugar, like the only feed they get is hay and grass. We cut out most of the grass once the first frost hits, especially if your fields are really short. It releases some sort of extra sugars or something in your grass and the frost really affects it more when the grass is short and so it can cause foundering and all kinds of issues with your horse if you let them graze on short grass. We don't do any types of grain mixes or protein, anything. The only thing we do is the mineral mix and it works really, really well. So, with that being said, let's get trimming, shall we? And yes, Stella is very dirty. I haven't brushed her off because we're not actually doing anything but trimming hooves. So, we're gonna be dirty. I'm gonna be dirty. She's gonna be dirty. Uh, that's part of it. So, I'm gonna park Stella right here in the gravel because she gets very distracted by the grass. I don't really have a decent place to tie her up where she doesn't get distracted. It's been about three months since I've trimmed Stella last. I probably should be trimming her every two months or so, but uh, I've been busy and because I don't have a place to do this indoors, it's kind of weather permitting. So her feet are a little bit messy looking right now. So you gotta clean them up. And yes, I'm parking her in the driveway so she doesn't get struck by the grass. Hopefully she doesn't wander off on me. It's a good practice to make sure that they can stand still while you handle their feet or do whatever without them having to be tied up. Self-control, it's a good thing to learn. Now, I like to do the bare minimum when it comes to trimming because given the right lifestyle and the right minerals, your hooves should be doing most of the shedding of the soles and the, the proper things that a hoof should be doing. So I shouldn't have to be super invasive with a knife and dig out the soles. Sometimes in like the spring, come here. Oh. sometimes at the beginning of the spring, their soles will shed a little bit later. So if I'm trimming, I'll just have to leave their feet a little bit longer than normal, which is fine. Their soles will shed out and 
everything will go just fine. Something that shoes will do to mess up your horse's hoof, now that we're looking at the bottom of the foot, is they'll pull in the corners of the hoof right here, and they'll make the frog right here drop down because there, there's nothing supporting the hoof right here. So if you look at a side by side comparison of a healthy hoof like this to a hoof that's been shooed, the, oh, I forget what it's called. There's a name for it, but it's where the frog right here like drops down and you can totally see how like this area right here becomes more narrow. Just another thing to think about when you're shooing a horse and make sure that it's really, really necessary that your horse actually needs shoes because there's a lot of times where they don't. And uh, maybe your farrier will tell you that your horse needs shoes because their hooves are soft or they're sensitive or whatever, but that's a mineral deficiency, a lifestyle deficiency, um, and it can be fixed without needing shoes. And we got this all cleaned up. See, a proper hoof will give you the perfect line to follow. So it's basically you just follow your mark and everything should go well. Something that you want to keep in mind when trimming is that you want your hoof to be super even. You want your both your heels to line up nicely and be very flat and level and the same all the way around. You don't want one side of the hoof being taller than the other side. So this looks pretty good. Let's go to the next one. Something that some people will tell you is that the white hoof, I know there's a name for it, but when you have most of the white hoof, that that hoof will be softer but I think that is also just a deficiency, mineral deficiency or whatever, because it's something I have never noticed in my horses that the white hooves are softer. Maybe the white hooves are more susceptible to like if they have any health issues or deficiencies or if they have bad like wet ground or whatever, that the white hooves might be the first to show it. But still less feet, even her white ones are always very hard. So I don't think that white hoof means anything. We're done. Now some things that I want to look for now that I'm done trimming is we want to make sure that when she's standing straight her back toes aren't toed in or toed out and you never want your horse to be sensitive or sore on their feet after you're done trimming because that means that either your horse has a deficiency or you trimmed poorly. So hi it's Lizzie from the future because I just wanted to pop in here and clarify that another thing you want to look for is very important when you're done trimming is that you make sure that your angles are right. I talked about this in my other video. If your heels are too long or if your heels are too short, toes are too long, whatever, you can notice right away the angles of your horse's foot and that'll make their ankle hawk drop or be too steep of an angle. I'll put up some examples up here so that you can see what I'm looking at. Just to uh, keep that in mind when you're trimming, make sure you look at the angles. It's very important. I'm gonna the video. Let's, uh, let's examine in these feet, shall we? Now that we have her standing somewhat square, we can examine these feet and see how good they're looking. They look like they're, I mean, she's not standing perfectly square, but we can see that these toes are not toed in or toed out. And neither are these. They look from both sides. Another way you can look is from the back. It's kind of hard to see with the big tail, but you want nice and even straight legs. You don't want the, what do you call those joints? You don't want those, <laughs> what are these joints called? <laughs> I keep, I trust so many blanks. You want their legs to be nice and straight. You don't want, so don't be pulling my glove out. Let's take her for a little walk and see if we see any. We're walking in gravel right now, so if she's sore, she'll be showing it right away. Come here. Do 
looking them pretty good. That's it. The only thing left to do is to go take a shower and rest my back for a little bit. I'd say that was a job well done. I hope you guys learned something from this video. If you did, give it a like and subscribe. And uh, again, if you're planning on learning how to trim your own horse's feet, I do highly recommend doing a bunch of different research from different people and watch YouTube videos. Really well-rounded on what you're doing. I was taught kind of secondhand. My mom learned from a barefoot trimmer way back when. She taught my sister, my sister taught me. We've been barefoot trimming our horse's feet for over 20 years, so yeah, wherever you can, learn how to do this. Don't just take one person's advice on it. That's the thing about learning how to do it yourself is that you can make sure that it is being done properly. So. Hi, it's Future Lizzie again. Sorry to interrupt again, but uh, I forgot to mention earlier that just doing a quick Google research for the sake of this video, some minerals that are great for your horse's feet for strengthening them and stuff, zinc and copper. Copper makes sense because I know that a lot of horses are deficient in copper. Magnesium, DMSO and iodine are another one that I saw. I assume that this is a external application, like you put it on the outside of the feet. I'm just assuming. And then another one that was highly recommended was biotin. Those are just a handful of minerals that Google says is great for your horse's feet. So you just do more research on it and figure out exactly which ones your horses need. Also, another supplement that we give our horses that I forgot to mention in this video already is EMs. I've mentioned this before in a different video, Efficient Microbes. It's a fermented brew with molasses and water and a starter culture thing. And horses absolutely love it. We put it in their water every single day and it's great for health and gut bacteria and all those things. So I also recommend looking into that. A healthy gut makes a healthy horse. Anyways, I just thought I would throw that in there. And uh, back to the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I post new videos every single Sunday, so go ahead and subscribe. You can go follow me on Instagram and TikTok, and I'll see you guys next week, Sunday. Bye.